Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 9th of January. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister meets Indian counterpart in New Delhi to bolster ties. Pakistan Army Chief's tenure can be extended, Senate rules. And 69 Taliban fighters surrender in western Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunavardhane arrived on a two-day India visit on Thursday. He met Indian Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokhale and his Indian counterpart S. J. Shankar in capital New Delhi and held talks to bolster bilateral ties between the two countries. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunavardhane, who is on a two-day visit to India, met Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokhale in capital New Delhi on Thursday. This is Gunavardhane's first official visit after taking over as Foreign Minister last November following the formation of the new government under President Gotabaya Rajpaksa. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister later met his Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar at Hyderabad House in the national capital. The two leaders had bilateral discussions aimed at deepening ties. Briefing media on the meeting, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar said that speedy release of 15 Indian fishermen under Sri Lanka's custody were also taken during the meeting. EAM did take up uh, the matter of Indian fishermen and boats which are in the custody of Sri Lanka. Uh, we were told by the Sri Lankan uh, Foreign Minister that uh, as announced by the Sri Lankan president during his visit that all the boats and the number of boats at this point of time, there are 52 boats, uh, they will be released. Gunavardhane's visit marks a high-level follow-up to President Rajpaksa's New Delhi visit in November last year. India then announced 450 million US dollars line of credit for development and counter-terrorism. A 15-member delegation of foreign envoys to India on Thursday arrived on a two-day visit to the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir to assess the efforts by the Indian government to bring normalcy in the region. The visit is the first by foreign diplomats ever since the special status of the region was revoked in August last year. A group of 15 foreign envoys arrived in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday, the first visit by diplomats, ever since the revocation of the region's special status, followed by its bifurcation into two union territories in August last year. The two-day visit organized by the Indian government aims to give first-hand experience to the envoys of the efforts being done by the authorities to bring normalcy in the region after reasonable restrictions were imposed. The objective of the visit um, was uh, for the envoys to see firsthand the efforts which have been made by the government to normalize the situation and also, uh, you know, uh, basically to see how things have progressed and how the normalcy has been restored uh, to a large extent since uh, the developments related to Article 317 in August. The envoys, accompanied by senior Indian diplomat Vikas Swaroop, later held a meeting with political leaders and civil society members of Jammu and Kashmir. Last year, a delegation of 23 European Union lawmakers were taken on a two-day visit to assess the situation in the Union territory. So it was a free and frank discussion. What is the situation here? What happened and what did not happen? This all was it was it was it was not a structured thing of uh, something structured. There were certain questions they wanted to be uh, clear on. There were certain things which we wanted to express what has happened. The 15-member delegation was later in the day briefed by the Indian Army on the security situation in the region. 
During their visit, the envoys were also scheduled to visit Jammu, the winter capital of the newly created Union Territory, and meet top officials as well as members of the civil society. At least one person was killed after a major fire broke out in a three-storey printing press factory in Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday. Around 30 fire tenders were rushed to the spot to speed up the rescue operation and douse the fire as huge plumes of smoke billowed. A fire broke out at the printing press factory in Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday, killing at least one person. The three-storey building caught fire in Patparganj industrial area in the wee hours of Thursday. The reason of the fire was yet to be ascertained till the last reports came in. As many as 27 fire tenders were rushed to the spot to speed up the rescue operation and douse the fire as huge plumes of smoke billowed. Now, there are 27 cars at the moment. And one man's death has been confirmed by the police. We are working in our enemies. Meanwhile, a similar incident occurred in the neighbouring Noida city where fire broke out at the ESI hospital. At least six fire tenders were at the spot to douse the flames and carry out rescue operations. However, no casualties were reported in the incident till the last reports came in. Following the blaze, patients and the attendants were immediately evacuated from the hospital building. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Upper House of Parliament on Wednesday approved three bills that would allow the government to extend the term of the country's army chief. Current chief of army staff, General Kamar Javed Bajwa, is set to benefit from the new law, with his tenure already due to have been extended in November. Pakistan's Senate, the Upper House of Parliament, on Wednesday passed three crucial bills to give extension to Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa for another three years. The bills to extend the retirement age from 60 to 64 years for the Chiefs of Army, Navy and Air Force and the Chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff Committee sailed through the Senate despite protests from minor parties, local media reports said. As soon as the bills were passed, Senate Chairman Sadiq Sanjrani adjourned the session until Friday morning. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government rushed the bills through Parliament this week after the Supreme Court halted granting of a three-year extension in service to Bajwa in November last year. The Apex Court cited procedural loopholes for the halt but granted a temporary six-month extension to Bajwa. The new law now bars the judiciary from challenging such appointments. Moving on, load shedding continues to be the major concern among the people of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Residents in the region complained of regular electricity cuts recently and said they are getting high electricity bills without even using it. Long hours of load shedding have continued to disturb locals in the illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir. Residents claim they get electricity only for 4 hours out of 24 hours in a day and even then they have to pay high bills for the electricity which they never use. They call it an injustice done to them at the hands of administrators who according to their wish cut electricity for long hours and give it back accordingly. <laughs> The <laughs> Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have long blamed Islamabad for depriving them of their basic rights, claiming the agenda is to keep the region underdeveloped. The region was illegally occupied by Pakistan more than 70 years ago. Around 69 Taliban militants have surrendered to the army in Afghanistan's western core province amid military pressure, an official has confirmed. Ghor province has been the scene of heavy clashes between Taliban militants and government security forces for long. Mm -hmm. 
69 Taliban militants have surrendered to the Afghan army in Afghanistan's western Ghor province amid military pressure in the mountainous region, provincial governor has confirmed. According to media reports, Governor Gulam Nasir Khaze said a clean-up operation by Afghan National Army is underway in Ghor since the past one week and that the 69 militants surrendered to the army in Shah Raq district. Khaze added the surrendered militants also handed over 60 rounds of guns to army officials and the army personnel also found an ammunition cache based on a tip provided by some former militants. Ghor province, around 247 miles to Afghan capital Kabul, has been the scene of heavy clashes between Taliban militants and the government security forces for long. Both the sides are now trying to consolidate their positions during winter in the mountainous parts of the country. A three-day National Vegetable Fair was recently held in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka to encourage people to consume more vegetables. The fair exhibited a range of agricultural, food and traditional products manufactured by small entrepreneurs at grassroots level. A three-day National Vegetable Fair was recently held in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka to encourage people to consume more vegetables. The theme of the fair was Safe Vegetable for Good Health and Nutrition and was organized by Bangladesh's Ministry of Agriculture. Organizations from rural Bangladesh areas set up stalls showcasing a range of agricultural, food and traditional products manufactured by small entrepreneurs at grassroots levels. Bangladesh government has been organizing such fairs for several years in a bid to ensure safe vegetable production, sound health and nutrition for consumers. Visitors would soon get to see a visual treat as the process of sowing of bulbs is in its final stage at a famous tulip garden in India, Jammu and Kashmir. A dedicated team of floriculture experts and gardeners are busy in the process despite harsh cold. Visitors would soon get a visual treat as sowing of tulip bulbs is in its final stage at Asia's largest tulip garden in India's Jammu and Kashmir, a prime attraction for tourists from around the world. The Department of Floriculture, like every year, has imported tulip bulbs from Holland, which is globally renowned for its tulips. A dedicated team of floriculture experts and gardeners are busy preparing the land, cutting the beds in different patterns and sowing the tulip bulbs despite cold weather conditions. Despite of this, that here the weather is very chilly, the minus temperature is, but those who are our employees, the gardeners, are all here to work here so that it can be completed and finalized and final process complete. You know that the weather is going on, we are happy that the weather is going on, that we can take the tulips at our time here, and when the tulip garden is open, we want to see that the weather is going on, and the weather is going on, and the weather is going on, and the weather is going on. A festival is held annually at the garden in the month of April when tulips are in full bloom. The sprawling tulips of varied colors make the garden look like a silken carpet with intricate designs. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories, so once again. Sri Lankan foreign minister meets Indian counterpart in New Delhi to bolster ties. Pakistan Army Chief's tenure can be extended, Senate rules. And 69 Taliban fighters surrender in West Afghanistan. And now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.